three books. Expert music business advice, game-changing wisdom. What could these books do for you? A lot. I'm David Harsh. I'm a Christian recording and touring artist. I've been writing songs since 1996. I recorded four professional albums, toured all over North America, and I even won first place in a national songwriting competition. And a lot of my progress has been shaped by the books I've read. Today, I'm going to share three books with you that have the potential to change how you think about the music business. Now, there are three reasons why these books are going to be important for you. Reason number one, you can learn what you don't know. There's a lot about the music business I didn't know at the beginning, and these books really broadened my perspectives. Reason number two, you can learn from other people's mistakes and avoid a lot of heartache. I hired a music attorney for one of my projects, and I'll never forget one of the things she said. She said, don't sign anything of significance until you've had an attorney look it over. If you sign it, and then bring it to me for legal advice, the only thing I can really tell you is that you should have talked to me before you signed it. I can't help you at that point, right? These books will help prevent things like that. Reason number three, you can learn what success means to you in the music business. Whether your goals involve music that's local or international, you need to craft a vision for what success means to you, and these books can really help. I've also got three quick spoiler alerts about these books. Spoiler alert number one, they aren't brand new. They've been around for a while, but that's okay. There are updated editions available that are staying current with the times. Spoiler alert number two, there are more music business books out there. I've read over a dozen books on this subject, so if you don't see a good music biz book listed here, it's because I decided to focus on just these three. And spoiler alert number three, these books are all written by attorneys with a middle initial in their name who have practiced music business law in one avenue or another. Why would that be important? Is copyright law a thing? Can copyright infringement happen? Are there legal rights you need to claim or could unintentionally sign away? Yeah, buddy, law is a part of the music business, so get ready to be blessed by the expertise of these music law experts. Okay, so those are the three reasons and the three spoilers. One more thing before we begin. I encourage you to stick around for two solid pieces of music business advice that have affected everything about how I do music. All right, enough of my yakking. Let's boogie. Book number one. Breaking In to the Music Business by Alan H. Siegel. This lesser known book really gave me some helpful tools in my back pocket, as well as healthy reminders about how the music biz works. Did you know that although you acquire a copyright for your song the instant you write it, and you can perform it and share it as much as you want and still retain all the rights to it, unless you get it copyrighted officially through the Library of Congress, you will be limited in some ways for what you can do with your song? This includes getting a record company or music publisher to consider working with you on it. This is just one tiny bit of wisdom I appreciated from the author. The other thing Siegel does, amidst all the great detail he provides, is to break up the intense flow of information with some really helpful interviews from people in the industry. The last thing I'll say about this book is that Siegel is pretty keen on industry vocabulary, and to that end, he's created a 21-page lexicon glossary with all these important terms unpacked and defined, and he refers to it throughout the book. I've not seen a book like this, and that lexicon really helped me grasp some of the legalese a lot better. He does have an index as well. So, if you're hoping to add to your vocabulary and your collection of music business books, this is a good one to have. See the link in the description below where you can buy it. Own this book that many of your colleagues may have never heard of. Okay, book number two, What They'll Never Tell You About the Music Business by Peter M. Fall. This is the current cover for this book. This book is a bit sobering, but knowledge is power, and I'd rather be cautioned about royalties, advances, producers, publishing, copyright infringement, and fine print before I get unpleasantly surprised by reality. 
I bought this book out of sheer curiosity based on the title, because after reading several other books that were pretty straightforward on the subject, I wanted to know some of the things that people in the business wouldn't necessarily be forthright in telling me about. For example, as a recording artist who has released an album with a label, you get paid royalties for sales and airplay. But did you know that you need to pay out of those royalties for multiple charges before you get paid? By the way, your producer, co-writers, and publisher are not subject to these fees. Only you are. The book unpacks each of these, but this knowledge definitely swayed me to go the independent route so I would have more rights to my publishing. It may or may not affect you. According to the author, in terms of touring, having a manager can have pros and cons, and even a manager with clout can actually have a negative effect on some of the relationships you've built on your own. Scattered throughout the book are cautionary tales that can be learned from. Thal soberly reminds the reader that even with a solid band and album signed to a label, there's no guarantee that their material will be given a fair amount of promotion. Radio play, though ever-changing, is a narrow gate to fit through when there are so many labels and records to promote. So artists who are excited about what they've put together may encounter people in the industry who hold the keys to certain doors and who give others priority for reasons that can't necessarily be quantifiably explained. Now, lest you think this book is just a whole bunch of negativity, the author does take time to encourage you to stay in reality, ask good questions and evaluate the answers with healthy skepticism, learn from mistakes, observe the mistakes and successes of others, seek out good counsel, and develop a healthy, functional team. The other phrase that leapt off the page for me was, don't overlook the obvious. He talks about deciding which things you should do yourself and which should most certainly be delegated. The wisdom in this book will caution you, but also inform a lot of the decisions you need to make. Again, link in the description below. Before I get to our third and final book, I welcome your constructive comments. But please be constructive, right? Let's all get along here. I also invite you to like this vid and subscribe to our channel. I'm here to bless and encourage you as well as others. So let's get some more momentum to help me encourage our fellow songwriters out there. Sound good? Okay, lastly, book three. Drum roll, please. Here it is. All You Need to Know About the Music Business by Donald S. Passman. And this one, my friends, is an Amazon bestseller today. It was the first music biz book recommended to me by a colleague way back at the beginning of my journey. Passman's wisdom in this book has resulted in the LA Times calling it the Industry Bible. As of the filming of this video, this book is in its 11th edition updated with all kinds of additional features including streaming media and social media. This is the current cover. The thing I liked most about this book was how down to earth it was as a read. A lot of these kinds of books can get into gobbledygook without ever really pulling up out of it for a big picture view. Passman is great about keeping the reader engaged and keeping it practical. And he breaks it down into big sections like your team, record deals, publishing, touring, and merchandising. He has a way of making things accessible without dumbing them down. I am so glad that this was the first music business book I ever read because it allowed me to settle into the groove of reading music biz books without getting caught up by all the heavy vocabulary at the beginning. I did buy a couple really thick books on this subject that were so wordy that I ended up just using them as references, much like a dictionary. Not this book. I read it cover to cover. He talks about co-writing, mechanical royalties, copyrights, choosing an attorney, advances and recoupment, creative marketing, tour support, and he even sprinkles in a few quizzes to keep you guessing and answering. Now, I saved this book for last because it's the best. And yes, you can buy it through the link in my description below. And I really hope you do. Purchasing these books through my links will allow me to get a small commission at no additional cost to you. If you choose only one of these three books, get this one. But if you buy all three, you'll get three unique perspectives 
on the business that will fill in a lot of gaps for you, whether you're just getting started or really getting serious about a career in music. Remember what I mentioned near the beginning of this video? You need to craft a vision for what success means to you. Here's the wisdom I've saved for you for hanging out with me to this point. Years ago, I met someone in the industry who had been through a lot, and he said to me, make sure you have a clear definition of what success means to you, because if you don't, it's very possible that someone else will come along and offer you a definition of success. But that definition may end up benefiting them more than it benefits you. Mic drop, right? The other piece of wisdom I have for you is this practical tip. Never underestimate the importance of an agreement on paper. I'm sad to say that people in all genres of the music business, and I do mean all, need to be held accountable with agreements. For example, I never do a show without a written agreement signed by both parties. That protects both of us and keeps everyone's expectations clear on paper. Now, I've got another video I'm working on that talks about the three best songwriting books I've found, especially for guitarists. And if you've subscribed to this channel, you'll know how to access that video when it has dropped. Thanks so much. I'll see you in the next video.